Part one of living with my abuser. Now after our little bouncing around homeless stand, we had finally established a place of our own after I buckled up the nerve to call my mom and say, hey, I'm living from this place to this place. I ain't got nowhere to stay. Occasionally I'm in the car. Can you come and help me? She said, baby, do you got any money? I said, yes, ma'am. I really just need you to co-sign on this apartment for me because he can't because he's a felon. He was a felon from previous relationships of putting his hands on women. So my mom actually came through for me, which I didn't expect her to, but she did. And when she finally got to me and she filled out her side of the application, the lady was running. She looked at me. She was like, baby, are you pregnant? Of course I said no, because why are you trying to condemn whatever that is onto me? Now, she did look at me. She was like, baby, your nose getting wide, your titties sitting up big, and, and, and you, you're gaining a little bit in your hips. Are you sure you're not pregnant? I was like, no, ma'am. So we ended up getting the approval. We got our keys. I gave the lady the money order for the money and everything, and we were officially renters. So we ended up getting our keys, moving in, and the first thing that we got was a TV. He did end up scavenging the neighborhood. He found a couch, he found a mattress, and he found a frame for us to be able to sleep on. One thing he did do, y'all, was go down the street to this plant and get a job. So I'm thinking like, okay, you got a job, we got a place to live, so this can only mean we're going up. So of course he was going to work every day, he was coming back, but one thing he failed to do was put groceries in the house. So I took it upon myself. He ended up leaving his wallet at home one day, y'all, and I ordered a pizza. When he came home, he walked in real angry and stormed directly to me. I was like, what's wrong? What, what's going on? He told me, bro, did you spend some money off my car? I was like, yeah. Bro, why is you over there taking money off my car? Why is you stealing from me? Sir, I ain't nobody stealing from you. I was hungry. Ain't no food in here. And I just decided to order a pizza. Right in the job. I fell down to the ground, looked up to him like, why'd you do that? Bro, you gonna stop taking money from me. You want part three? Stuffy hit me in my mouth and I looked up to him like, why'd you hit me? He said that I need to stop stealing money from him. Sir, there ain't no food in the house. How am I stealing money from you just by ordering some food? We a couple, we together, right? He said, I know it's some noodles in there. You could have made something to eat. Sir, noodles? Like he was not playing no games about the little $12 I spent off his car for a pizza. But not only were you complaining about me spending that money, you went right in there and warmed some of that pizza up and ate it. Now he was on the phone telling somebody that I had stole from him and that if I did it again, he was going to do something to me to make me wish that I hadn't have done it in the first place. Like, sir, are you planning to do something bad to me? Now, I know what y'all saying. Like, why wouldn't you leave? Why wouldn't you leave if he's saying that? I didn't have nowhere else to go. And there was no kicking him out because my name was on the place my mom had co-signed. And trying to kick him out, it was going to be a whole hailstorm. If you won't part, the time had went on, y'all, after the little incident about him being on the phone telling somebody he was going to do something to me if I took more money from him, that he actually did go and get some groceries and put in the house. He wasn't a big meat person. Only thing meat-wise that he ate was fish and shrimp. So in the house, all he had was tilapia, catfish, and gold shrimp. Now, of course, he got vegetables, he got fruits, he got milk, water, and all those other little things. But it was never no pork, nothing to put any meat on the bone. Now, prior to all of this, y'all, I had been diagnosed anemic. I found that out back when I was in high school running track and I fell out and the ambulance rushed me to the hospital. When I got there, I found out I had an iron deficiency. Now with the iron deficiency meant I couldn't have kids without iron supplements. My blood is very thin and that was going to be craving ice a lot. Now he knew that and guess what he did? He went and got me a prescription for Vitafol. If you don't know what Vitafol is, it's an iron pill. If you won't. So I went to the door and I noticed that it was the lady there that my mom had met to fill out her cosigner application. When I opened the door, she handed me a piece of paper and was like, I'll see y'all in the office. I didn't know what it was. I didn't open the paper. I set the paper on the counter and was like, I'll give it to Joseph when he gets here. So as I'm walking back over to the kitchen, I pick up the little mattress that I was laying on the floor, got my blanket, and I took it into the room. I knew it was time for me to go ahead and start cooking food, running his bath water, and getting everything prepared for when he came home from work. I ran his bath water, put his clothes in there beside the sink, and then I went into the kitchen because I knew he said he wanted fish tacos and vegetable medley when he got home. So when I got in there, I took the fish down, took the vegetable medley down, let it defrost, and then I put the fish into the pan and started crumbling it up. Now, I don't know where this feeling came from, but I had the sudden urge to throw up. I ran straight over there to the kitchen trash can and nothing but clear stuff came out of me. Now, whenever you see clear stuff, that sounds like pregnancy. Y'all want the next part? Now, I'm sitting at the trash can throwing up clear stuff. And when you see clear stuff, it's a clear sign of pregnancy. Now, in my head, of course, I'm saying like, damn, I can't be pregnant. I can't be pregnant. But then on the flip side of me, I was like, oh, okay, if I tell him I'm pregnant, all this abusive stuff gonna stop. So I go ahead, I get myself together, wash my face, and then I proceed to finish making his fish tacos. I got the vegetable medley, and by the time I was done cleaning up, putting the dishes in the dishwasher, sweeping the floor, bathroom, making up the bed, all those good things, he was coming through the door. When he came through the door, he was like, mmm, smell like you done did something. 
Sir, I do the same thing for you every day you go to work. Why are you saying that? Now, I'm not really sure, but I got this nervous feeling like something bad is about to go wrong. So, of course, the first thing I did was the lady from the office came and she knocked on the door and gave me a piece of paper. I reached up off the cabinet, grabbed the paper, and I walked it over to him. I gave him the piece of paper that the lady gave me when she came to the door. Of course, he read it and he had like a weird squinge on his face. He ended up ripping up the piece of paper and throwing it in the trash. I never went into the trash to figure it out because I knew I had just threw up in the trash can earlier. So as time goes on, he begins to ask me what I was doing throughout the day, if I was talking to anybody, if anybody had called my phone, you know, very insecure ass questions. So of course I wasn't talking to anybody. And then the conversation escalated into something different and I'm not 100% sure what the conversation was, but it did end up with him getting angry. So when he got mad about the situation, he ended up punching me on my side and I fell down onto the couch and he punched me on my back. The severity of the conversation had to have been rough for him to do that. But I do remember verbatimly saying, you doing all of this to me and that's why I'm pregnant with your child. If you want part nine, drop some prayer hands in the comments. I'll be right back with you.